little Marvin Pierce, Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher. We're here this morning to do a podcast and live video, right? Yeah. On YouTube is where the video will go. Yeah, it'll go on YouTube, not on Facebook. Well, we can share the YouTube video to Facebook, yeah. Yeah, but we're talking about dogs in their first week here. Yeah. And so if you're listening to this, you've recently dropped your dog off for boys. And you should be boarding. listening to this yeah. if you recently yeah. dropped your dog off. That's the whole purpose of us spending our six inches of snowed in morning here in the warm table talking about dogs and people dropping their dogs off and how traumatizing it is. It's hard. You two know. I don't. Yeah. It's you want my dog? Let me know. I'm on to you. All, of them, all four of them and the other half. Uh, yeah. But really, it is hard. And one of the things I want to touch on here is some people, it's not hard. Some people just Correct. barely slow down when they come by and throw me their dog. Some people don't even get out of the car. Correct. I've had people hand me the dog out the window. Yes. I've had people have other people to deliver their dogs. So, and then I've had people that's really just, I mean, it's emotionally stressful yeah. to drop your dog off yeah. here and and... Make them sleep in a kennel where it's, you know, 60 degrees or in the winter. And I don't know. Last summer it got up to 80 one day when it was 106 outside. Because we do have heat and air-conditioned kennels. And if we have dogs that, you know, are short of hair or whatever, we uh, we put jackets on them. We have a lot of dog jackets here. So it's not like your dog's going to be freezing to death here. Every once in a while we give <laughs> the little dogs a blanket. Yeah. Very rarely, but... But then, like, it. right now, we've got a little portable heater in one front of one dog's kennel just because they don't handle hair. I mean, so, I mean, we really do look out for your dogs, and way more than I ever did my cow dogs. Cow dogs for 20-some years, I I mean, probably in 20 years, there's been maybe 30 days I've had a heat light in there. But my dogs had an outside run where they were actually outside. It was always under a roof, but they were outside. But they could go through a hole in the wall, and they'd go into a bed with straw and stuff in it. And I mean, they were fine. I never had an issue with it. So we're going to talk. I, what are we talking about? I just I'm got, just going to give you the subject <clears throat> lines, and then you can touch on it. Suzanne can touch on it, and I can touch on it. So Okay. But remember... Mostly listen to what I say. <laughs> not Depends true. on you, who your lessons are yeah, with. <laughs> yeah, listen to, the, listen to Bianca, Suzanne, too. They have really good points that I don't. So have. this is two separate subjects, and I'm going to attempt to one. keep you on track. What the first week looks like for your dog, behavioral dogs. What about what it looks like for me? <laughs> <laughs> It's rough on me. <laughs> For behavioral dogs, it is rough on you. We got a turd yeah. up there now that's been here like three days, and he still wanted to eat me last night. He doesn't like you. No, he don't no. like men. No, correct. And they yeah. brought him to a man trainer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it tells you what they think of me. <laughs> no, but uh, it is hard on these dogs. And I'm going to touch a little bit about behavioral dogs in, yes. in the world I live in. Yeah. You know, you have dogs, that, and we've got one that's supposed to be coming in for the last few months, and I think he'll be here one day. He just has allergy issues and yeah, he's ear been infections the and for some tummy infections. GI I don't know. Stuff. But he's been to trainers. They spent a fortune on that dog in training, mm-hmm. and they can't get him around dogs because he just wants to kill dogs. But I handled a dog once at a consultation. They brought him in, <clears throat> and I don't... <clears throat> We're going to go back. I'm going to back up to what we're talking about, what it's like for that dog when it comes here. Uh, just like the dog we have here, Riley, right now, that don't he hates me. Yeah. And uh, Eliana last night, are you going to take Riley out? I'm like, hell no, I ain't taking Riley out. You're taking Riley out because <laughs> it's like 7, 8 o'clock at night, and I don't have time right. to spend an hour with Riley to get him kind of right in his right. head that I'm not going to hurt him. Right. So... Mariah took Riley out to that turn, and you handled him. You handled him, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne and Bianca's who I'm pointing at. And Mariah's handled him. And Eliana's handled him. Yeah. I don't know. Nancy's probably handled him, but I haven't handled him. Because, you just supervised. <laughs> yes. And now he's better with me, you know. He's not lunging at me no more and trying to eat me. And he, what is he, a doodle? Yeah. Burn-a-doodle. Lab or? Burn-a-doodle. Burn-a-doodle. Yeah. And he don't like men, and he don't make no bones about it. Uh, but last night... 
Eliana took him out to the turnout pen, his outdoor kennel, and put him in there, and life was really good. Well, Eliana went to get him out of the outdoor pen, and I just walked out the back door and spoke, and holy crap, it was all night Donkey Kong. I mean, he went to the back corner, he wasn't coming out, and so I just, I said, okay, I'll leave and let y'all have your time together, and I left, and I was gone for a little while, and I'm like, hmm. I might go check on her because there's no <laughs> Eliana and Riley. So I go back door and I said, hey. She's like, well, he's being a little snarly at me. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I said, I'll go get him. So me, <clears throat> I had options. I could have put my slip leash on him and we could have we could have talked about it, but mm -hmm. I didn't. I walked in the kennel and he lunged at and then he went on by me. <laughs> and he went out and then he wouldn't go into the kennel, the barn. So I went out the other corner and he lunged and went by me again, went back to the kennel, which I had shut the door. And Eliana had the kennel door open all the way into the main He's kennel. He's off leash at this point. Off leash, yeah, yeah I never caught yeah. him. Yeah. And because I didn't want to fight with him, you know. Yeah. And so I walked over by him again and he ran into the kennels. And then he went around and started going his kennel, and then he decided to make a run for it. And another dog was on the other end of the kennel, end of the kennel. Uh, can't remember her name. But she barked, and he's like done about face, says, Oh, I ain't going by her. She's mean. And she was in the kennel, so he ran back into his kennel. And so Eliana shut the door. Now, talk about why you didn't put that dog under pressure at this point in its first week. Well, the main thing is, is I didn't get him out of his kennel. Right. And I like to get the dogs out of the kennel if I'm going to handle them like yeah. that. Unless I have to. If one of y'all are in trouble, then I go get the dog. But of course. it wasn't enough trouble that I needed to get the dog because he didn't try to bite Eliana. He just kind of snarled, snapped at her a little right. bit. And so for me, if I want to start with him, I'll be the one to get him out of the kennel. Yeah. And then I'll take him out, probably to the round pen, <clears throat> with some cool dogs, Mari and Roxy and Bear and whoever. Uh, and I'll get them dogs to come over to me and be petted and stuff. And yeah. I, I, I kind of feel that I'm letting Riley see that life's not like he sees it in right. his own mind. Rather than pressuring him. Yeah, there's soon. no reason for yeah. me and him to fight about yeah. it, you know, and argue about it and get him on a yeah. leash. And I know there's all kinds of ways to fix dogs like this. And 20 years ago, I would have handled it differently. Yeah. But now, you know, a few thousand dogs later or whatever, it's like there's no reason to rush this dog. And I think that's what gets people in trouble with dogs so much is they try to hurry, 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 yeah. hurry, hurry yeah. and train a dog. Yeah. And they go by that point of the dog listening. Yeah. And like what you're saying, <clears throat> you're letting the dog see other dogs be handled by you and have fun yes. with other dogs. Not to tease him, but to let him know, look, this is what life can be like. Yes. I'm going to give you a few days to think about if you want to try and do that. And it's yeah. like taking a kid to a fair and they are afraid of all the rides, but they watch all the other kids doing it. And then they're like, maybe I could be brave and go on the ride. Yes. And then they have fun. But if you force them to go on a roller coaster, they're never going to want to go to the fair ever again. Yeah. And you know, on the same note, <clears throat> here a while back, we had a dog that had the same issue. I don't remember what dog it was now, but it was one to try dog fight. And instead of, we've got a viewing area. If any of you have seen our videos, we got like a 12 by 12 or 14 by 14. We call it a viewing area. It's a chain link fence and inside our 60 foot round pen that's covered and got walls and everything on it. And if we have a dog that's wanting to try to be a little bit dog aggressive, if it's not a fence jumper, you know, a lot of times we'll put that dog in the viewing area and then we'll bring other dogs in on the leash. So the dog in the viewing area isn't being restrained. Yeah. And I think that sometimes I, in my world, and like I said, y'all train ever how you want to train, whether you want to do treats or, I don't know, teach your dog to do backflips or ride on your back or whatever you want to do before you get all the foundations down. I think that's what hurts a lot of dogs is people treat, teach them to shake hands and take cookies gently, but they can't catch them and stuff like that. And <clears throat> So I think by people going to a dog park with an aggressive dog on a leash that's tight, you're just, I mean, you're just blowing stuff up. You know, you're using a shorter fuse and you're lighting it and causing your dog to explode because he can't handle himself. To me here, if we can't handle, and we do it all the time, we'll have a, a, a aggressive type of dog like you're talking about on a leash in my round pen, and then I'll have one of y'all bring in a dog on a leash, but your dog's always on loose leash. You can't ever be on tight leash. And then I can get my dog to calm down more, quicker, 
Now, <clears throat> there's times whenever y'all have to leave the round pen because my right. dog can't handle right. that much yeah. pressure. Yeah. So, and that's the thing for these dogs. Their first week of being here, it's usually just about us trying not to get bit, trying not to let dogs get in a dog fight because that's two of the things we just always try to avoid. And if we can do that with the dogs, you see these dogs watch and try to learn. You see them sunk back in the corner of their kennels like, oh my God, don't kill me. Mm -hmm. And then you see them halfway in their kennel. Yeah. And then yeah. another few days, you'll see them at the kennel door like, yeah. hey, come get me, take me yeah. out, okay? I want to be like those dogs. Yeah. And a lot of times that's what it is. And you know, me and you talk as, as here recently, you know, you're, you're worse than me. I used to be in your spot to where you worry that a dog isn't far enough along. Right. Like right. Mia right now. I'm really aggravated that she's not further along than she right. is in her actual training. Right. <clears throat> but, you know, last night I was sitting in the recliner looking at something on the Internet, and I'm like, you know, Mia's so far ahead because we took her home yesterday, and she never bet no one that I seen. Mm -hmm. She snapped and mouthed a couple times, but this is a dog that's bit somebody, uh, I don't know, maybe hundreds of times, you know, right. her mom and dad. Right. I don't think she's ever been anyone else, but and she's a four and a half month old Australian or German Shepherd. Yeah. So for me, I think that <clears throat> that's the first thing we got to get out of this dog's head mm -hmm. is you just can't bite everybody, and it's hard for people to understand that sometimes. I mean, like she's here now for another week. She was supposed to went home Saturday. We took her home, but we decided to bring her back, and keep her another week. Yeah. Just because I didn't feel that she is far enough along. And we kind of knew that, you and I, even mm -hmm. Suzanne, before we ever took yeah. her home, <clears throat> that we didn't feel she was ready to go. And so I told the people, I'm not 100% sure she's going to be ready to go home next weekend. Right. Or this weekend. Right. But this is a really rare. It is. This is that we dog. take. That yeah. we take. Now, yeah. there's dogs out there that bites people way more right. than this dog has probably. But they're dogs. <clears throat> and for me, we're going to try to kind of stay on the subject we're on. What it's like for your aggressive type dog that comes here for a week. We, you know, we just pretty much explained it. And that I just want to add, that's what it's like for some of them. But some of them get in so much trouble with their owners that, believe it or not, once you're out of the picture, they kind of take a deep <clears throat> breath. And some of them we can get out quicker than most, and we still have to be really cautious. No, we got and Oscar put pressure. Yeah. yeah. Oscar's a good example. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't yeah. here but days until I had him out with my personal And dogs. he had extreme problems with mounting dogs and leash reactivity. Yeah. Those were really his only problems, but they were extreme with the owner. But I think he had more problems always. You know, the dogs always do. But for me, it always goes back to the first, when a dog gets here, <clears throat> I feel... We avoid the gray areas. Right. The leash yeah. pulling, humping yeah. on dogs, yeah. not coming to me. Yeah. And, you know, I get in trouble from you all the time, griped at or um, bitched at or whatever <laughs> you want to call it, but it's all the same, about just fixing dogs on leash pulling when they get here. Right. But yes, it right. just, that's one thing that just annoys me to death. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it just drives me nuts. Yeah. And at the dog park, We've seen the two German Shepherds drag the guy through there Literally. like three weeks in a yeah. row. I mean, it was everything he could do to hold yeah. him. If, it, if he ever hit a slick spot, he'd be down. And I, I don't know, I hope the dogs are tied to yeah. him because they'll be gone. But it took me like five minutes, and I had the one yeah. dog just to quit. Yeah. But <clears throat> so it's not that way with all the dogs, but the dogs who come here, like Bianca was just saying, the majority of the time, the dogs do not want to be the way they are. No. Yeah. They're that way because the, I feel the majority of the time people mishandle the dog. Right. And it's just because they don't understand yeah. it. They don't yeah. train dogs, yet, 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 you know. Yeah. But I feel that we just try to nip it in the bud when they get here. The leash pulling got to quit. Yeah. And then we can start working with them. And then we try to get them. To, if they're a dog aggressive type of dog, the majority of the dogs we get that are really dog aggressive never been in a real dog fight. Right. That The dog had to get sewed up. Right. Uh, part of the time, the trouble is from humping dogs. Yeah. That's a really common problem for people bringing their dogs here. And I don't know. I think Not knowing never, how to settle down. Just stop that behavior, you know. But 
So I think we covered that, what the dogs is like. And I mean, they get fed two meals a day. They get to go in and out of the kennels all the time. A lot of these dogs don't get to go out in our big playgrounds or half acre or whatever they are. We don't take them out there until we're confident we're not going to lose your dog. Yeah. <laughs> they've got to, you know, they've yeah. got to have a pretty good yeah. recall in the round yeah. pen on them. Uh, they got to have pretty good leash manners. they got to yeah. be good with dogs to a degree. Now, some dogs, we got two dogs been here one two weeks and one a week, uh, Diego and... Clarence, <laughs> and they haven't been out with other dogs yet. They probably will be there tomorrow. You know, we'll start mixing some of my dogs in with them. Yeah, and there's always so a good, good reason for why. And the reason why with those dogs is just because they're kind of shit disturbers. Yeah. I mean, they get in trouble, so and they get nervous. really hyper. And yeah. They're, you know, Clarence, he was so nervous, he didn't even want to be around people kind of when he got right. here, and Diego was just the opposite. He just, like, panted and drooled and stuff and yeah. wanted to go home and get back on the couch, I guess, yeah. but... Together they do really good now, and that's yeah. the main thing. <clears throat> when I, I don't think they'll be this way with the owners. You know, they weren't this nervous no. when they came. Yeah, it's just they're in a new place. Yeah. So every dog is kind of treated different when they come yeah. here. But the bottom line is, we avoid the gray area. We're fair to the dog, and we make sure the dog don't pull on leash. And that that's a whole different subject that we're going to talk about is. The reason the board and train is so good, some people, I have a few frequently asked questions or frequent thoughts of clients is the first day they they drop their dog off, it's like they some of them really worry, like, did I make the right decision? And I think what you were just talking about, right when you get the dogs out of the kennel, they're not allowed to pull on the leash. And it is really hard to replicate that at home. It is. So every interaction that we're having in that first week matters. And that's why sometimes you're the only one, we're the only ones to handle the dogs, even if they just go potty, because we, one, don't want to do anything wrong by the dog, but two, we want everything to matter the right. way they're handled. And so... And the confidence level. Yeah. And the handler yeah. and the dog, yeah. you know? You can be as confident as you're like, I'm 100% confident so I can go get this dog out of kill. Yeah. Like Suzanne was with that little mean dog the other day. Uh, Otis. <laughs> and the only reason she didn't get Otis out of the kennel is because I asked her to stop. Right. It wasn't her, because. but the thing is, <clears throat> if we're not careful, Suzanne would get an attitude. Like, no, I can get the dog out. <laughs> and it's like, well, <laughs> no, let's just take a break. Yeah. <laughs> and it is fun, but it's so fun for me to see the fact that your confidence has grown that much, you know. Now, same with Bianca, sometimes I have to curb y'all's attitude. <laughs> and be like, no, just let me do it. Because of the fact that... <clears throat> Like me and Bianca was saying, you're not saying much yet, but hopefully you'll join in before we're done. <laughs> <laughs> it is. There's a, there, all these dogs come in are different. They are. But I feel in the other aspects, if they're the first week, they're all the same. Like you were just saying, yeah. they need consistent yeah. Yeah. rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So go ahead. Uh, so that was my other topic is just how every interaction we're having in this first week and the last two weeks, but especially in this first week is setting a new structure overall for the dog. And it's just so hard to duplicate that at home if you don't have time to set up your own personal board and train at home because it really needs to be in the kennel mm -hmm. unless you're focusing. So as soon as you get them out, you're in training mode. As soon as you put them back up, you're can break for a minute but you can't just let the dog go do whatever the first foundation of training and expect them to get it as well as they do when it's they repetition here. like you're over saying and it's over, over and over and over, and, over. Yeah. and you know don't ever make no mistake about it i make mistakes you make mistakes for you sure. make mistakes yeah. with dogs so yeah. we're not sitting here saying we're perfect so of course no. yeah so nice we just dogs. have the time we're here we right? do All that's day. what that's this what y'all pay doing. that's yeah. what you pay yeah. us for is yeah. to try to be as fair and as good as we can be to to your dog. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then uh, this is just a thought that I know you will enjoy touching on. Can you believe your dog might actually enjoy some time away from you? <laughs> I don't think they do. Some of these dogs, as soon as they get out of the car, they're like, hey, I'm going on vacation and I'm going to learn while I'm here. I'm excited, Mom, Dad, yeah. I'll see you later. I think about, I used to... Um, counsel students with Brett when he did middle school stuff 
we would do summer camps and winter camps, and we would go away, and the kids were, like, so stoked to get away from their parents, and they, we'd be there for five days. And by the fourth and fifth day, the kids were like, okay, maybe I like my parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe I need to change a few things so my parents will like me more. And But the first few days, it's like they need that respite away from their parents who they think are just telling them they're wrong all the time. But then they're excited to go back to the structure and love that their parents get them. But in this case, we're not just helping the, the kids get better. We're helping the parents get yeah, better, too. Sure. And it gives you a great jump start. You know, we got a dog here a while back. I'm not going to mention names because I don't even remember it anyway. But <laughs> it, I don't know. It was several months ago. I think the people were so butt hurt. <laughs> That when they come to pick their dog up, he was just here for boarding. I trained him a long time ago, but he was just here for boarding. They were so butt hurt that when I brought their dog out to their car and they put the leash on it, the dog literally tried to drag him back in the kennels. <laughs> They're like, oh, my dog don't even want to leave. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, dang. I felt bad. I felt bad for the people, but yeah. I felt bad for the dog too. Yeah. It's like, dude, how miserable yeah. is your life that you don't want to go back yeah. home and yeah. get on a damn couch in the bed? Yeah. And we see that all the time where dogs are super excited to come in, but they're excited to go home. Yes, too. but this dog didn't want to go yeah. home. Yeah. He wanted to go yeah. back in my kennels. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you had like, he was here like a week, but we tuned on him the whole week and trained on him and just made him yeah. better and better and better and better. Yeah. So it wasn't like he was at the Hilton sleeping on a king size no. bed yeah. and eating cheeseburgers and french fries and shit. Yeah. He was trained on. But that's... <clears throat> that's but he didn't want to go home. Yeah. And that, I think, is a whole evolution of a different podcast where we talk about People Why don't your dog want to go home? Dogs. <laughs> they, no, sorry. They humanize them. They de-dog them. Where they treat them like a human, and they think that the dog being on the couch, the dog being on the bed, I being talk given all day and about toys this all the time is great. <laughs> and that's what the dog wants. But what we see is that they're a lot happier with a lot of other things, like getting to go to work. Yeah. But Being you know that's a, a stay, whole nother subject. Where are we I at? Know, I totally agree. Yeah, but, let's get back on this. I'll be on but, this all day. Well, no, because one of the things we're talking about is that one of the things that's hard for people at drop off is they can't bring their suitcase with toys. And now I thought you said and, they could. They just had to pay different or more. <laughs> Or no, I just got to be nicer about saying they can't. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a totally different that's lecture what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I got this lecture a couple days ago. That's what you started to talk about at the beginning. If a dog is too cold or we're concerned about them, we will take all the care of them and get them a blanket <clears throat> or a coat or extra food, whatever it is that they need. But they don't need toys and cookies and Snuggies and heartbeats to snuggle up with at night to to be a happy dog they need a lot of different things and that's what you've signed they up need to structure. learn about they yeah. need like right and wrong yeah. I think and it's not your dog can't ever have those things it's right now those unless don't you matter. ask me <laughs> ask Suzanne and Bianca yeah. they're weak <laughs> whatever <laughs> Uh, okay, so then, uh, so can you believe your dog might actually enjoy some time away? A lot of them really they do, do enjoy They do, they yeah. do. I mean, that's It's like, a lot harder on you all than it is the dogs yeah. the majority You know, the fun the thing time. is we've got the video up right now of Lacey and Fred. And that dog, Fred, let it out the other day on loose leash right by his leg all the way to his car. I was so proud of that kid and, and the dog and the mom and dad and, you know, everybody. But that's what it was, like you're talking about. <clears throat> that dog was just here for day board or for a couple of days or whatever she was. Yeah. That dog was excited to go home with that kid, but she behaved. The parents of dogs don't even do that when they come and get them. They usually drag them out of the barn. Yep. yep. They drag them in the barn. Fred's dog didn't drag him in the barn. It didn't drag him out of the barn. Okay. Seven so, years old, by the way. Yeah. It, the kid. It's incredible. And he yeah. just keeps going. The other day there was a dog lunging and barking in the rampant and he just walked right by it like that's nothing. And adults, we stop and we worry about why that dog's barking and yeah, if I our do. dog is nervous about it. And yeah. anytime I use the word we. Yeah. Sometimes you leave me out of we. We's across the table. Right but we stop and worry and let the dog get fixated on a problem. Well, you know, I think there's so many to. times what happens in my opinion. I've never been there, but... I think the people stop, and they try to figure out what I do, 
or what yes. it should have done. Yes. Ask me. I'll tell you what happens. Yeah, Keep on going. <laughs> um, okay, this one is Suzanne's topic. Will my dog lose its spirit, personality, or will this break them? No. Suzanne's topic. So I think <laughs> that people have that question. That was a question that I they had, yeah, and I do. brought that up, and uh, I was really worried. And I can tell you firsthand experience that it did not break my dog. <laughs> yeah, and we had that happen a lot. Yeah. And the thing is for me, you know, is I feel that... I'm trying to figure out the right way to say this. Somebody the other day is like, come on, Marvin, just spit it out. I want to hear it, but I can't. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I feel that. Depending on how you train your dog. I go back to my cow dogs because that's what I started training. I trained a lab once in 93, then I started training cow dogs like 24, 25 years ago now. And I mean, there's not very many days that, since that time that I don't train a dog. Even on vacation, I train a dog in Walmart parking lot. I don't care wherever I'm at. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I can tell you now that there's way more dogs that are scared, timid, can't go on walks, can't get off leash on walks. Mm -hmm. uh, the people can't open the front door of the house because the dog will escape. They can't open the car door because the dog will escape. And why? They never trained them. Mm -hmm. They never trained to recall. They spend a lot of times getting Fido to sit in the house yeah to stay mm -hmm. maybe in their fenced in yard you know mm -hmm. but they can't do it down at the river the boat docks because mm -hmm. if i don't breaks it stays gone you know yeah. so i think a lot of times people just misunderstand a happy dog versus a institutionalized dog yeah and if you really go back to it <clears throat> i feel the majority of the time if you treat your in the house dog the way majority of people do, it's really hard for them to have the privileges that uh, our clients' dogs have mm -hmm. because of the fact that one thing is, and not saying you can't because you can train a lot of different ways to end up with what we have. I did. My first dog I trained, sport. Back in 93, bird dog, I never used electric collars. I never used prong collars. All I used was choke chain and a regular leash. Mm -hmm. But I could not imagine what you could do to get that dog to run away from me mm -hmm. or not come to me. I can't imagine it. I mean, 300 yards, I could, whew, he would sit, spin around, and look at me, and watch for hand signals, whatever. But that was an exceptional dog, and it was an exceptional time in my life. Right. But the key word was I took the time every day, every morning, every evening. I trained on my dog. And he was not locked up in a house where he <clears throat> could terrorize stuff. He was kept in the kennel and he was kept in my backyard. And he got away a lot, so don't think he was perfect. Because I remember the lady in dog control in Newburgh, she had me on speed dial. Got your dog. Your dog down at school playing with the kids. They're all petting on you. You want to go get him or you want me to go get him? We had a frequent flyer, give her 10 bucks, give me my dog. I did not do all the paperwork <laughs> shit because he did get loose. So I didn't have him contained very well in my backyard. Right. But he, when that dog was with me, he was like as perfect dog as I've ever owned as far as rules. So I think that a lot of times these people that worry about breaking their dog's spirit, you know, their drive. They don't need their drive broke. They don't need their spirit broke. They just need to have some gears installed yeah. and some yeah. rules that they yeah. understand that yeah. there's a consequences. Yeah. And people talk about prong collars, e-collars, how mean they are. <clears throat> no, I don't see that. I mean, I see people mishandle them. For you sure. Know, but yeah. it's accidental. And we, yeah. if it's here, we always just stop it. We're yeah. like, hey, wait, you know. I had a dog yep, yesterday with electric collar, and I think that you all probably thought I was killing Duke. Oh, <laughs> and it was only on one, and he was just pissed. Yeah. And he would do it on vibrate because yeah. he was just mad. He's like, no, I can run away. And it's yeah. like, dude, you can't. You got to yeah. come back. Yeah. And, you know, he, like And I this said, is a dog that yips if you don't open the gate. Yeah. I mean, he just is noisy. 
Yeah, he's yeah. a husky mix, so yeah. he just likes yeah. to speak. He does. He has a lot And I think say. if I could have heard what he was saying, understood him, it would probably have been bad because he was probably giving me a cussing. Yeah, I don't want to come to you, yeah, Margaret. Like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do my to, own thing. I'm going in the kennel, and I'm going to get on my bed, and <laughs> I'm going to take a nap. So just <laughs> let me go. But it's fun to train on that dog because he has such a personality. Yeah. And, you, I mean, well, we'll never break his personality. I don't know no. sure what you do to break a dog's personality. Yeah. I've never broke one. I've had dogs go get mad at me. And <clears throat> the personality thing, the fun dogs like Coco comes in, and uh, Ken will probably listen to this. That dog peed on itself. When you go to touch it, or pee, uh, it would pee on itself. So, for me, why? It's simple. It got all goo-goo and giggly and shit, and it couldn't control itself. Yeah. So now it controls itself. It don't pee on itself. I hadn't seen it do it for probably a week and a half. Yeah, no. And it didn't do it with Ken and his granddaughter came and done a lesson Saturday with us, and it didn't do it then either. Why? Because we're just teaching it that we're not going to goo and gaw you and make you go pee all over yourself. We're going to teach you to be respectful, and we'll pet you, and we'll go play, play ball, whatever you want to go for a jog if they want to jog with or whatever they want to do. But she's not going to get all that attention when she's being crazy. Yeah. So it don't break a dog's spirit. It just teaches a dog to, I, I don't know, I feel have more fun. Yeah. All right, what's next? Unless Suzanne just, has something to touch on that. Yeah, do you want to add anything to the personality? What's your No, dog? just Bodie's uh, spirit was never broken. He was just a better behaved dog with his same personality. But he could just control control himself. So and now there's a time and a place for them being goofy. Yeah. If you if they're being goofy in a time when you don't want them to, when you want them to settle down, they They will. Right. Can you have a bad personality? That's a loaded question. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, I'm thinking about Scout when he came here. Yeah. He was mama's baby. Yeah. So he had a bad personality. Yeah. He would bite me if I just walked up to you and yeah. give you a hug. Or he would dog yeah. bite if a dog just ran up to you to say hi. Yeah. But when you dropped him off here, were you worried about him losing his personality? No. I was worried about other things. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the key to it, you know. I, you know, it. <clears throat> one of the fun things about me was I always try to have fun with the clients and customers, and a lot of them like my personality, I think, because yeah. it is kind of weird. Sometimes they don't know which side I'm talking serious or not, but sometimes they don't need to know whether I'm being serious or not because it's better if they think I'm not being. Yeah. But I feel that when you brought your dog, Scout, here, mm-hmm. he'd done like eight or ten lessons before mm-hmm. you decided to board and train him. But... I think the eight or ten lessons probably took longer than the three weeks of boarding train. Yeah. But with the three weeks of boarding train, your dog was so much cooler when you come to get him. Yeah, and so much less stressed. And you were less stressed Mm -hmm. because the dog was less stressed. Mm -hmm. But, But because he's my baby... I cared way more about him being less stressed. That was my motivator. That's what you were stressed about. I know. Getting him unstressed. Yeah. Yeah. So it all comes back yeah. to the same. The human stress, the dog stress. Mm-hmm. I'm not stressed. Yeah. I just want the dog yeah. to go on home and come yeah. back in a week. What's yeah. interesting, I was worried about losing my dog losing its personality or whatnot, and you weren't worried about that at all. No. But you had an aggressive dog. Yeah. But you found his personality after the training. Yeah. Because yeah. all of that stress yeah. and, and all was yeah. gone. And yeah. And the fun thing is stuff. now with him is with his attitude, personality, kind of sometimes the same thing. Yeah. Like the video you showed us with him trying to pose for his pictures yeah. until he's playing with a stick. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I had enough of this yet. I want my picture he taken. He did. Get he Tilly totally out of did. Here. Yeah. yeah. And so it was a fun yeah. personality. It, it wasn't is. like, I'm yeah. going to go bite and yeah. fight. Yeah, you know? he's a sassy little shit, but a polite one. <laughs> yes, and that's the difference with people, you know. they. <clears throat> just the other day, we had a dog that came here recently. And the people just bragged and bragged and bragged on a dog for like, you know, and I stand there and listen. Sometimes I'm like, what's the accept? You know? And they, they're they like, well, you bit someone. I'm like, that's kind of important. <laughs> if I, I mean, I'm not, never claimed to be normal. Nobody accused me of that. But if I went to somebody with my dog who bit somebody, and they're like, well, how can I help you? I'd be like, well, this pot liquor bit somebody, and we need to try to fix the problem. <laughs> I would just skip all the good things. I Literally, I would skip them. Just like I told the kids whenever we sold horse or two around here, you know, over the years, 
I said, if somebody buys a horse from us, they have to know every problem. And then we tell them good stuff. Yeah. But if there's one problem, they need to know yeah. what it is. And the dog people, they just have a hard time. It's like they just can't say my dog bit somebody. Yeah. So they yeah. just go all around. They the feel dog. they have to say all the good things they good things they have done so we don't think they're bad dog parents. And that's not at all what's going through our head. We're, We're never You thinking. are here for a reason. We yeah. want to help you. And if you tell us all the bad stuff, we can help you a lot more. Yeah, and it's just hard. And yeah. for me, it's always the same. I always tell people that. Your dog will tell me the truth, so For you sure. might as well own up yeah. to start with. Yeah, and they just have, a, and sometimes they they don't know what's wrong. I mean, they don't know all the problems, and that's the reason they have them because they didn't recognize them when they started, like yourself yeah. and yourself. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. All right, what do you got? Uh, talk about excuses in dog training and making time. Man, that's we were just talking about that. Yeah. So when's this going on the internet? Oh, we gotta get it approved by the. Yeah. A tech guy, whatever we call that guy, <laughs> Brett. But oh, I was throwing this out while I go before we started. I was asking Bianca and Suzanne, how many people do you think in our area didn't go to work because of snow? Because we had like it's April, yeah, and it's snow. April twelfth or eleventh yeah. or something. Yeah, and we had like six inches of snow here. Going over towards Suzanne's house, there's probably eight inches on top of the little peak over there. But so, how many people didn't go to work this morning? Now, there's a few thousand around our local area that didn't go to work. Some don't even have power. You know, my kids don't have power, either one of my son or daughter. But I'm betting that the people with the problem dogs that need to train on them, not our people, the people who've been here, they probably got up and were like, damn, we're going to train on our dog like Marvin said. But yeah. the other people maybe got up and had another cup of coffee. Another cigarette, another glass of wine, depending on if you've been to bed yet, but <laughs> or beer. But or they went to the gym and they worked out some more, you know. Yeah. Yep. Or they slept in. They hit the snooze on their alarm until they got tired and they shut it off. But they didn't go train on their dog. That's an excuse. Yeah. You should have been like, damn, I'm gonna get them trained on my dog some more and I'm gonna take a break for a couple hours and I'm gonna train on my dog some more. So <clears throat> I feel that you never want to contact me and get a hold of me, which is pretty hard to do because they have to go through, like, sometimes Carrie, Jocelyn, Bianca before you get to me. Sometimes Irene, depending on what phone number you call. Uh, but you never want to call me and say, hey, I don't have time to train my dog. Mm -hmm. You have time. I'll figure it out for you if you need scheduling help. But sometimes it's not the fact that you don't have time. Sometimes we don't have the desire mm -hmm. to train our little Fido puppy we just got, mm -hmm. and, but we want a great dog, and we don't want to get a rescue dog. Mm -hmm. And not knocking on rescue dogs, because we work with a lot of them and with the Newberg Shelter. And we've helped with some great dogs, and we've helped with a lot of shelter dogs that people come here with that's got them in other, from other places also. So it's just an excuse. Mm hmm Smoke one less cigarette, mm -hmm. uh, drink one less cup of coffee, get up 15 minutes earlier, don't go to Dutch Brothers or whatever, go buy McDonald's, get mm -hmm. a cup of coffee. Save some money, too, but don't use it to buy the dog more toys because he has enough. But I think it's, it's I don't know, it's just an excuse. Mm -hmm. I've always been told, and this ain't very polite to say, mm -hmm. but if you want something done, find a busy person. It's simple, because yeah. if you go to somebody that has lots of time, sometimes it's because they don't do a lot. Yeah. And not saying that was with everybody. Somebody retire. Sometimes right. people retire right. and kick back and take it easy, but most of the people I know who retire are busier after they retire than they were before they retired, but not all of them. So, did, Suzanne, you got anything to add to the excuses? No, I think that's just it. It is an excuse. We have... Lots of time, and it doesn't take a lot to be able to train on your dog. It don't. It's, I tell people I'll teach a dog more in minutes than you will in hours, mm -hmm. and I'll teach a dog more by not speaking than you will by speaking. Yeah. Bianca, you got anything to add? One more topic. Fun. Do you have anything to add about the... Excuses? Yeah. They're just excuses. We all have them. I always have excuses for going to the barn on my day off. <laughs> so what other topic do we have? Having fun. 
With your dog? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So I'm going to touch on something that okay. I feel has a huge amount to do with having fun with your dog. Okay. So do you know how stressful it is um, to go play fetch with your dog and he won't give you it? It's not very fun. Stress, I said, on a human. Mm. Yeah. I don't know that it's stressful on every human. The majority of humans is. If they can't catch their dog and get the ball or the frisbee, they get pissy. But So... Do you know how much fun it is for the dog to keep it away from the owner <laughs> who's being frustrated? Huh? Yeah, a lot. So, for me, if you turn that around and you train your dog that he has to come to you regardless, and then he has to drop the ball. That's when you can have so much fun with your dog mm-hmm. because you can play ball, frisbee, fetch with a stick, whatever you want to do. You were throwing shit in the water this weekend, or sticks in the water for your dog to mm-hmm. go fetch, and she was doing it. Yep. And she was having fun, and she probably mm-hmm. brought you the sticks. Mm-hmm. So it can be so much fun, so rewarding for the human and the dog. <clears throat> and it don't take a lot to train that into a dog. I mean, I've had people here with search rescue dogs, different things, and tell me I could never get a stick from their dog. And I showed them that it, it, it took a couple minutes, but the dog gave me a stick or the tug rope. So I think that's the hard thing for people sometimes is they go to have fun with their dog, and they can't always have as much fun because they turn the dog loose and they can't catch a dog. Mm-hmm. Even at a dog park. I mean, I've had clients here that goes to the dog park and they're so frustrated because they can't catch their dog at the dog park. And I don't know. I think if you train the way we train, you can catch your dog anywhere. It doesn't matter if he's playing catch or at a dog park or mm-hmm. out in the field or whatever. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I think people use excuses. Oh, I can't use e collar. I can't use a prone collar. Yada, 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 yada. You can, you just choose not to. But <clears throat> your dog goes back to not having the fun that he could have because he don't have an owner who has the confidence <clears throat> that they can catch their dog and they can control their dog in that situation. And even if you have a real problem dog that you just can't ever get over a problem, like dog fighting, mm-hmm. You can still take your dog wherever you want to go and control your dog so your dog can't get in a dog fight because yeah. he can't go to the other dog. Now, yeah. you can't control people's dogs that are loose and they can't control, right. <clears throat> but you can control your own dog. Yeah, and open up more <clears throat> opportunities to take your dog places and do more things. With Anywhere you want to go. do so much. Yeah, illegal. Yeah. Even with Mia over there, that lady was so excited because that dog just sat and laying by her feet. Right. Yeah. While we were talking, I mean, she that lady was having fun, and so was the dog because the dog was with mommy and daddy, and being good. And it was calm and not stressful. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. just chilling. Yeah. And that dog couldn't chill when we met it three weeks ago. Yeah, and you know that some of these dogs are destined for what they what happens to them in life. And we've had I don't know, <clears throat> I over the years had lots of dogs here that couldn't be trusted. Yeah. By their owners around dogs. And the majority of the time I feel but people use the prong collar and put pressure on a dog that's already mad and agitated and that doesn't work. I always say you gotta have a loose leash to have a good dog. Yeah. If you can't have a loose leash then it's hard to have a good dog. And back to the fun dogs can have fun in the house, you know. Trin, Jody's old dog was here with us for I think fifteen years or sixteen, whatever it was. She played fetch in the house a million times from the couch in the living room while the recliner, where it was, to the hall wall. Mm-hmm. And she would come to Jody and look at her all funny-eyed, you know, while we was watching TV. And Jody's like, okay, get a toy. And so she would go over under Jody's little end table and her basket of toys and get out whatever toy she wanted to play with. And Jody would throw it back and forth across the hallway, across the living room into the hall, and trying to go get it. Never knocked over nothing, never got crazy. And if Trent got done, she would just flop down the floor and lay there with us. Yeah. Or if Jody got done, Jody would say, leave it, and she'd just drop a toy and either lay down or go back in the room and go to bed. But we had a lot of fun, rainy-ass, cold, snowy nights, whatever, in the winter with that dog right here in the hallway. Yeah. So you can have toys for your dogs in the house, of course, but I don't think that a dog should be able to be possessed with a toy <clears throat> or crazy about toys. Yeah. 
Yeah. So there's a million and one ways to have fun. I mean, you and yeah. Brett really have a lot of fun with your dog this weekend. We do, yeah. And you have a lot of fun with your dog. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's... That's the thing. You talk about having fun, having fun training your dog and doing some interesting things in the house or yeah. outside or whatnot. But then there's also the post-board and train fun where you can go and, like what you are talking about, experience the fun with your dog off-leash yeah. on a hike. Yeah. Okay. Doing things that you never thought possible yeah. before yeah. because you have such a well-behaved dog. So fun just keeps increasing. It's it's just training yeah. all the way. And yeah. the fun training, like yeah. you said, you know, to me always, if you can't have fun training, then you need to find a trainer that can. Yeah. Have fun training your dog. Yeah. Not pay him, of course. Well, unless you find a frequent, I guess. But then you, you reap the rewards, you know, yeah. because you can go do so much with your dog and have fun, you know. Yeah. It's just. Well, some people, I think, that have come in um, and talked about wrestling with their dog or playing in a way maybe before they came into board and train that was not helpful for their dog. No, it got to be a problem. It got to be a big problem. And so they're kind of wondering, well, can I do that? Or, you know, it's kind of rethinking how to have that fun that's good for your dog. Yes. And so going out to a playground and having a, (coughs) you know, barrel on a post or, you know, do an obstacle course or something is just reimagining what that fun had been. Into a new way that is helpful yes. to your dog. And they're training yeah. on them. Right. Yesterday or Saturday with me, I showed those people. They had to really watch Pat and Mia because she still want to snap with some while. And I showed them how to rough house me and be all crazy. And she's just like, oh, this is so nice. And she never even opened her mouth. Mm-hmm. But it's because we've taught her she can't bite. Right. And I feel that one of the things I want to touch on a little bit is about trainers, you know. There's a million and one of them out there, and I'm, there's a lot of great trainers in the country, you know, in the world, and I still want to learn. I still try to learn all the time, and I seen a trainer that was going to be around in the next month, or this month, maybe later this month. I was really excited to go back and go try to check it out, but he's a protection trainer, and I'm not into protection dogs, so I uh, I didn't. But I think sometimes if you go do your research on trainers, and what did your trainers train to do? I mean, if you just want Fluffy to sit on the couch and look cute, <clears throat> that's the kind of trainer to get maybe. But <clears throat> I still feel that if I was going to look for a trainer, you know where I would go? To a cowboy. I mean, you go to not all the ranchers, you know, that have dogs. So they got lots of time the dogs run around that just, if you pull in, they might bite your car tire or you, you know. But for me, the cowboys that I hung out with, Scott Allison, Jared Lee, Fred, you know, there's, I don't know how many of them, Gary Erickson, all the ones that I knew that I visited with, their freaking dogs minded. They was well-respected. They had jobs to do, but yet they had a dog life, too. They weren't just working, locked up, work, locked up, work, locked up. They had a life, and they got to hang out with people and kids and, and lots of dogs, and they mm-hmm. couldn't fight, mm-hmm. you know. Versus if you sometimes teach a dog to heal for me, I don't know. I don't think it takes a long time with a leash, you know, especially. Uh, But still, I don't think that your dog's trained just because he can walk by your leg on a leash or he can sit and stay. I don't know. I don't think that's really trained. That's training, of course, and it's really hard to do a lot of times, but... I think that for me, I don't know, I go back to take my dog anywhere off leash and he comes to me when I ask him. doesn't matter what we're doing or what's there, whether it's birds, chickens, cows, ducks, goats, people, kids, horses, dogs, cats. If I call them, they come to me. But I think really do the research and don't sometimes don't settle for, well, I just got to live with my dog, can't be around dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, do some more research. And, and as you know... Everything in the country is expensive now. There is nothing cheap. And a lot of times you get something cheap, you got something cheap. But I feel that when it comes to having a happy dog, like that's what we're supposed to be touching on, a happy dog is one that don't have to be contained all the time and he's not in trouble all the time. He's not getting bitched at all the time. You got to have fun. And I I even tell you that sometimes. Got to quit being so serious with our personal dogs. Right. 
and have more fun. And you really listened to me for a change this weekend. You took Tilly out yeah. and had a lot of fun with her. And, yeah. You know, she got to carry sticks and swim in the rivers and, yeah. and just go have fun. And that's the hard thing for, I don't know, for us sometimes I think we just push it a little too far on training our personal dogs, not client dogs. Yeah. Client dogs, we've got all the patience in the world, but when it comes to our personal dogs, sometimes we've got to remember that, hey, we got to go have fun. Yeah. Like Bear, I even pet him sometimes when normally <laughs> I wouldn't just because I should pet him once in a while. Yeah. And Suzanne's the same way. I think sometimes you pick on Bodie a little bit. Okay. Because we get aggravated because they're not being perfect. Sometimes we just got to have them. we got to accept we have cool dogs. Everybody works here has cool dogs. Yeah. Jody's dog's Rio, you know. Yeah. Everybody brags about Rio because she's so cool. But it's because we put in the time and the effort, you know. It doesn't matter if you bring your dog here and you leave it three weeks and you take it home and you treat it like you did when you brought it here, you will end up with what you had when you brought it here. Yeah, yeah. So later we're going to talk about another video, audio, podcast, whatever, about what to expect when you week two. This this week one, y'all, so. Yeah. Right? Yep. You got anything you want to add? Uh, no, I don't think so. Suzanne? I'm good. Yeah. So everybody enjoy the blizzard of 2022 <laughs> and April the 12th or whatever it is. Snow's falling out of the trees. Talking about a couple more days of it. So we want to thank y'all. Hope you enjoy the podcast.